Hi, this is Peter Godinis, your ambassador with KADY TV with another version of Good Morning Port Wainimi. And it is definitely a good morning. We're here in a museum here in Port Wainimi, and we have the good pleasure of having uh, City Council elect, proper terms, Jim Hensley. And I want to say congratulations. Well, thank you, Peter. Uh, I appreciate you inviting me down here to us. It's always a pleasure. We've had a few times to talk, but this is a special occasion in that you've just been through the battle, so to speak. You fought it real well, and the results look really good. So, may I ask you, how do you feel right now? Well, going through the battle was, I, I watched a movie last night. Australian Special Forces going into Afghanistan to right. get out of a, a girl. And one of the guys thinks, he says, God, I love this job. No matter how rough it got, that was his thing. God, I love this job. And I loved it. It was fun. So it's, it's a good thing. And I asked you off camera some weeks ago, I said, you know, what was the, like, the key to your campaign? I mean, we were going through an environment where people have been in office for some time. You're like the newbie, let's put it this way, and having lots of obstacles. But you explained to me like kind of a principle and some steps that you took to actually get to where you are today. Yeah, I, I don't see the sense of rephrasing them. What I did is survey the market, see what the other people are doing, and use that to be my benefit, just like one would do in Jin Jitsu or, mm -hmm. or uh, various other forms of karate. Use their, their flow, their speed, their direction, and turn it into your benefit. Well, it's quite a story with uh, the results and how you about to go on doing this. It's like, you know, it's like a movie. The person who's new, suppose he doesn't have a chance, and wow, you're one of the top leaders. And I want to commend you for that. Mm -hmm. But you're now uh, a city council person elect, and now it's time to perform. So what are some of your initial thoughts? I mean, you need to be sworn in. Is that the next step? Yeah. And then... Uh, and then now it's hitting the streets and back into the arena. I'm worried that four years out, some new gunslinger is going to come try to get my job out. You think so? No. I doubt that. No, no, no. You know, I, I uh, Measure M was such a, a big topic that drove uh, a lot of things in Port Wainini. And, um, you know, what do you think the effect of it not passing had in regards to the election and how you... Uh, came about as being a city council person. It confused people. It was very confusing all the way through of anybody, which I'm sure you did, sit down and, and read through that and try to understand it. Mm -hmm. um, lawyers couldn't figure it out. It could be interpreted in a lot of different ways. Right. So that was a confusing part of it. And when you toss something out to the voters that's too not understandable, too confusing, it kind of scares me. Mm -hmm. So we needed to capitalize on no new taxes, no new taxes. People started, to, instead of focusing all these other peripheral problems, boil it down to a simple no new taxes. Three words. So, yeah, and we talked a lot about in some of the interviews with all the candidates and mm -hmm. a scenario, Jim, that said, in the event that measuring does not pass, you know, what are you going to do? Well, guess what? This is not a hypothetical anymore. What would you say as a, uh, as coming into a leadership position are going to be some of the things that you need to focus in on to collaborate with the other your fellow city council people? Last night it came up in the city council meeting. Okay. As you know, we had a city council meeting starting at 6.30 last night. It was rather short. Well, the, most of them were short. Uh, one of the items was tossed onto the consent calendar, which mm -hmm. the consent calendar is normally done as like approval of the minutes, approval of the agenda, uh, a couple of little minutia items that the city council just automatically approves and walks on. And normally the public doesn't speak into it. So they put this new executive pay raise into the, the consent agenda again. Right. I personally didn't think it was the appropriate time, hmm. you know, because that was much of it was predicated on giving the top executives a nice big fat pay raise, and it was done for, or the concept of Measure M being approved and having more money. Measure M didn't work. We know that. So 
I put in a, uh, uh, a speaker's card. I wanted to speak on it very politely. Of course. Okay. And they just kind of wore straight on by it. They just, the agendas, they didn't call any speakers. Poof, and it was done. So that's something we have to live with. Mm -hmm. I think it was a mistake without re looking at the prospects of it. But I'm not going to get into it. That's no, something that comes down the road. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the key items that's talked about now is how important it is for the city council people, as this new leadership takes reign, to collaborate, to get along, to try to do their best in the terms of agree to disagree. Right. But what types of behaviors and skills are you going to bring to the table to, you know, accomplish the collaboration amongst brilliant people in the city? City Council people. See, there he is. He's plugging Xerox training again. I didn't see such a word. He's talking about Leesburg. Xerox training. training when, okay. when you try to collaborate with people, Xerox training is very beneficial. Mm -hmm. and it does an outstanding job. So, what are some of the skills you think? Again, uh, I know we're both, so people know we're talking, we were both trained at a world class center called Leesburg, Virginia. At the time, Xerox owned it. And they, they talk to you about interactive skills, questioning, how to agree to disagree. So back to the question to you is, what skills will you be bringing to the table as, again, people come with different opinions, different mindsets, emotions, agendas, but uh, what would you be using, Jim? Listening skills, very okay. good. You need to sit down and listen to what the other person is saying. And then a good proper approach by Xerox skills is to repeat the question back to them, hmm. or their, their concern back to them in a question form. But you kind of softly mitigate it while you do it. Mm -hmm. It gives you time to think, and then you can answer, apply with your answer. And it makes them know, or allows them to know, that you heard them. That you're not just saying, I don't like this. Hmm. They know you heard them. This is very so well. it kind of smooths things out a little bit. I think, it's going to be real, I think that's going to be real important. And, you know, the same thing with, with the Measure M, the two big uh, entities that were in question were obviously the base and, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Harbor District. And so now it's going to be your position, and as well as your fellow council people, to collaborate, you know, with them. So what are your thoughts in regards to having to reestablish a relationship and communication with those two big entities, which were really kind that's, of a that's the critical topic. thing. Okay. One of the things that uh, I don't think you guys have met um, Jack McGrath yet, or have you? Have we met Jack McGrath? No, I have. Okay. But pretty sharp guy. Moved okay. up out of the valley. Uh, I knew a man. He worked in politics quite a bit. He's working to other promotions and stuff. Um, he has suggested that we get together with a a mixer right after the swearing in process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking to do is bringing a mixer with the city council people, the, the officials within the city, and the port people, and the unions, to come to the mixer over to Antonio's restaurant right after the swearing in, probably around 7, 7.30, have a few drinks, some munchies, and start interfacing again. Mm -hmm. I think that's a uh that's a brilliant idea in regards to bringing people on a common ground, mm -hmm. maybe make it a little bit social. But uh, it just seems to be such a key thing that we're talking about here is how do you get along with your fellow members in terms of collaboration and then being the one who steps up to embrace the two larger entities that have such an effect on the community of Waimee. So what other things do you have? I know the, cross, the, the guard, crossing guard was a big topic mm -hmm. with you. And on that, do you want to talk a little bit about that? It's more or less resolved, and I don't want to step into a cow pie right okay, now. Okay, okay. And that's that's appropriate. Uh -huh. And then uh, just some of the other things that you uh, think you want to bring to the, to the table and what you think. I'm, I'm going to kind of be light on it, okay. Boys and Girls Club. Okay. But that's, that's something that I'm going to have to tread lightly on. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about right now, and it came up in City Council last night, is Phase 2. Of the water rationing. Mm -hmm. Now it's rather serious, and I got thinking about it because I've been working with our Wyoming Bay Homeowners Association. We pay about twenty thousand dollars a month for a water bill for Wyoming Bay for our common grounds. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. 
Mm -hmm. And it wastes a lot of water. I mean, right over here we're going to keep our golf course. But we have a lot of lawns and everything else. And what was good once isn't necessarily good with changing times. I mean, mm -hmm. We have to be adaptable, right? Mm -hmm. An example, they just rebuilt the Jack in the Box restaurant down here. It was old, it was decaying, it was falling apart, so it was no longer attractive. Mm -hmm. So the Jack in the Box came up and said, got to the city of council to approve rebuilding it. Mm -hmm. And it looks so modern. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of examples like this. So the lobster trap over here. I got one time 40 years ago, it was the place to go. And then it got so deteriorated and so out of style that nobody went. Finally, they had to close it down. Hmm. So, times change. No, they change. Now, with yeah. water, we're going to have to change too. What yeah. once looked beautiful with green grass all over the place, in our own perception, it might change. Mm -hmm. Because we need to be coastal friendly, mm -hmm. drop tolerant. Mm -hmm. Landscaping, right? Very, very important. And if if the Wyoming Bay is putting out twenty thousand dollars a month for a watering bill, we're looking, and we have to get kind of the approval of the city, which I approached them last night in a nice question form. Will the city go along and allow us to make those changes? Mm -hmm. Because if we cut fifteen thousand dollars a month off of our watering bill, my homeowners association fee is going to go down, and I'm going to be just as happy. And the city, I believe, personally should set an example of saying, this is something that needs to be created now, guys. Uh, here's the new style. We're going to be the, the harbingers. We're going to be the forerunners to make this happen for everybody. Mm -hmm. So the, all the meridians that are not drought tolerant, the lawns that are not, and we can create a whole theme mm -hmm. for the city and, and revitalize the whole city. That's a, I think that's a good goal. I do too. I like it. Two other questions pop in my mind, which wasn't talked about, but uh, one of the things in regards to education, and in particular since it's in, in Wainini, the, the Wainini School District, but do you have any visions in regards to connecting and re-engaging? And since we have a relatively new superintendent over there, uh, never had a chance to ask you, do you think that's going to be an opportunity? Is to Dr. Danaberg retired already? I believe he is transitioning. And be but a, it's not quite completed yet. No. I think she's kind of like a no left. Yeah. And okay. so it's just, but you really are kept up, so I've got to have to. Danaberg's a, a great guy. He is. And uh, I just think even with him to be able to know that, yeah, he's, he's going to transition, but... You know, how much is he going to be involved? But do you have any visions of what to, you're going to be doing with education and connecting with the school district? Being a member of society, being a member of LULAC, mm -hmm. uh, education is absolutely vital. And that's something that I'm going to keep harping on and pushing and developing as nicely as I can to see the kids are educated. Mm -hmm. uh, and they need to be encouraged to make a world of difference. And part of that encouragement is the Boys and Girls Club. Too. I think that's very well connected. And the other thing, again, it's a, it's a strong question, but an important question, but in this election, I realize how vital the relationship between city council mayor and the uh, city manager is in regards to those types of relationships. Um, what would you say some of the things you're going to take ownership to develop that communication and relationship with, with Ms. Haas, who's a city manager? What kind of skills or what kind of attitudes are you going to bring towards okay. that particular relationship? That's a good question. How am I going to get along with the new city manager? I don't think it's a lot of problem, quite frankly. Uh, she's a very charming person, diligent, and realizing that Major M went down in the dust and that she has a new city council. It was kind of like the public said, no, we've got to stop this direction. It's not working. So. Two councilmen have been lost, two mm -hmm. new councilmen, mm -hmm. and challenging it, has been put in place. The tax measure has been shot down. So when this kind of event happens, you have to start recognizing it and work with it. Yeah. And I'm always a nice guy. You're like, Bob, <laughs> Bob can tell you, I'm one of the nicest guys ever in that. No, and I agree. And uh, you know, when I think about it from a general term, I'd like to call you the city council person elect, but you're truly a leader. And, you know, from a standpoint, you're a leader of leaders. And so I just, that's why I asked you, you know, what kind of behaviors, what kind of attitudes are you going to have to people who are actually pretty darn dynamic and smart? So that's why, you know, I asked the question. But uh, I think that Xerox training is going to pay off after all these years. Yeah, yeah. 
I would suggest this, just being the humble country boy that I am. Um, the Xerox thing is, is really an asset to it. And a lot of other things that Army recruiting brought me through. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my skills from broadcasting background. All these come together to help. And the big important thing right now mm -hmm. is getting these people over here in city council and the people over at the port and the base all together and mm -hmm. start talking again. They developed a the wall. There was no communication. So we have got to open that up right now. That's critical. One of the outside the box questions that we had talked about was the possibility of having broadcast collaboration between the two entities and the city. So nothing is is hidden because everything that you heard, you know, in regards to accusation, they said, she said, all that stuff was, we don't know if that was the truth or not. But do you think it should be more of an open forum, the, the, the dialogue between the leaderships of these two big entities and, and the city government? Open communications. You must have been reading. You must have been reading some of my campaign. Actually, I'm reading your mind <laughs> as you speak. No. So do you want to comment on that? Yeah. Um, it came up in the city council about uh, three or four months ago. A lady came in. She was an elderly lady. And, and she appealed to the city council saying, could we possibly broadcast these meetings so the elderly could, and the infirm can sit at home and see what's going on in our community? And the reply from the chair at the time, we didn't do it 24 years ago. My predecessors didn't do it. Why should we do it? I think it's absolutely vital for an open, air-free, just let it be mm -hmm. thing with government. It's a people. Of, it's a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And I have, and Bob Allen knows, I'm pushing, and we'll be continuing to work it. And I think it'll smooth out. We can get KADY or some other entity to come in and start broadcasting. Each council meeting. You mentioned something else last night that I'll be working with. Please. And Tom Figwell. Mm -hmm. They had the the pay raises for they had the pay raises for the new executives or the executives. We had to ferret that material out through thirty-two pages of documents. In other words, they kind of piecemealed it together so you could kind of the average public is not going to be able to digest it. Just here's a simple phrase, pay raise the executive manager. or when we put out a document and we're going to raise somebody's pay, it should be in plain, simple English so all of the citizens can read it and understand it. Simple as that. It's a simple, simplification of uh, documents. And I can those people. Yeah, I mean, there's always the rule that if a sixth grader can't understand it, it's not going to be understood exactly. by, by anybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that, the, uh, I wanted to say that from my position as the media, with all the candidates, I could say something really positive and I like them all. But again, at my last interview, I have to make a confession, you know, to you. Is you're fact, quitting? This is your last interview? No, no, I'm going to make a little controversial statement here. But it's, it, you know, I liked all the candidates. But like with, with, uh, with Tom, I told him we uh, are, both our wives are smarter. And so that was one thing. And the second thing was another Cal Poly. But with you, I knew you actually had that Xerox training. And you're likable to begin with. But uh, I just couldn't help but think that is definitely going to help you in your in your uh, in your in your uh, leadership responsibilities are coming up. Am I going to get a check from Xerox for this place? Yeah, for a, for can we cast a check for fifty cents? <laughs> awesome. The service charge alone. Jim, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Congratulations! I, I look forward to just want some wonderful things. Yeah. This is Peter Godinus, your ambassador with KDY, with uh, with Council Personnel Let Jim Hensley. Until next time.